Chemical compounds are classified as organic or inorganic. Organic compounds are compounds that contain carbon combined with other elements such as hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. It's its own branch of chemistry. Inorganic, inorganic compounds are compounds composed of elements other than carbon, although there are some overlap between the two areas. An important class of molecular substances that contain carbon is, is the organic compounds. Granite compounds make up the majority of all known compounds. More than, three, more than 13 million substances, approximately 60% of those recorded substances, are part of the organic class. The simplest organic compounds are hydrocarbons, compounds containing only hydrogen and carbon. Common examples are methane, ethane, propane, your, your uh, hydrocarbon type fuels. In the 18th century, compounds from living things were called organic. Compounds from non-living things were called inorganic. Organic compounds easily decomposed and could, could not be made in the 18th century lab. Inorganic compounds were very difficult to decompose, but were able to be synthesized. Today, we commonly make organic compounds in a lab and find them all around us. Organic compounds are primarily made of carbon and hydrogen, sometimes with oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur, and a trace of amounts of other elements. The main element that is the focus of organic chemistry is carbon. Carbon atoms bond almost exclu exclusively covalently. Compounds with ionic bonding carbon are generally inorganic. When carbon bonds, it forms seven covalent bonds, excuse me, when it forms, it forms four covalent bonds. For either four singles, or one double and two singles, or two doubles, or one triple and one single. Carbon is unique in that it can form limitless chains of carbon atoms, both straight and branched, and rings of carbon as well. Here are some examples of some carbon compounds. Examples that have single bond, double bonds, triple bonds, rings, as well as straight chains and branch chains. There are two main categories of organic compounds, hydrocarbons and functionalized hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons contain only carbon and hydrogen. Most fuse are mixtures of hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons containing only single bonds are referred to as alkanes. Those that have double bonds are alkenes. Those that have triple bonds are alkynes. Hydrocarbons containing C6 benzene rings are called aromatic. Here are some common hydrocarbons. Name and straight chain hydrocarbons consist of a base name to indicate the number of carbons in the chain with a suffix to indicate the class and position of the multiple bonds. Suffix A-N-E as the alkanes, E-N-E for alkenes, and Y-N-E for alkynes. This would be your single, uh, double, and triple bond. Then you have your base name for the number of carbons in the chain. Okay, If you have one carbon, it's meth, two, eth, three, pro. 4, bu, bu, 5, penta, and so on and so forth. Functional groups are non-carbon groups that are on the molecule. Substitute one or more functional groups replacing hydrogens on the hydrocarbon carbon chain. So if you have a hydrocarbon and you replace that hydrogen with some other functional group, is what we're discussing here. Generally, the chemical reactions of the compound are determined by the kinds of functional groups on the molecule. Here are some families of organic compounds. If you replace the hydrogen with an OH, we're talking about the alcohols. If we replace it with an oxygen, we're talking about the ethers. Uh, C double bond O, aldehydes, with a hydrogen attached to carbon as well. Uh, if we're talking about C double 
bond O we're talking about the ketones C double bond O with the OH attached to the carbon carboxylic acids C double bond oxygen with an O attached to that carbon as well esters and if you have your NH2 on it it means although it's important to understand organic compounds and all but I'm not really holding you accountable for all that information uh, in this course but you should be familiar with I am holding you accountable for writing up chemical equations though chemical equation is a symbolic representation of the chemical reaction in terms of chemical formulas for example the burning of sodium and chlorine to produce sodium chloride is written as, as this two sodiums plus a Cl2 gives me two NaCl's the reactants, those species being consumed on the left side of the reaction, are the starting substances in the chemical reaction. Then you have an arrow that means yields, and the formulas on the right side of the arrow represent the products of what's being produced. So you have your species being consumed to form your species being produced. In many cases, it's useful to indicate the states of the substances. So we put sol S for solid, G for gas, L for liquid, AQ for aqueous if it's soluble in water as the solvent. When you use these labels, the previous equation now becomes 2 sodium solids plus Cl2 gas gives me 2 Cl2 two sodium chloride solids. We write the above we write above the arrow any conditions for reaction. So we may put pressure, we may put catalyst, we may put heat. That would be a, a delta sign. The reaction gives a recipe for the amount of reactants needed to produce the amount of products. Species with no coefficients have understood coefficient of one. So what this is telling me is a recipe. It tells me if I take two sodium solids and one chlorine gas, I'll make two sodium chloride solids. The law of conservation of mass dictate, dictates that the total number of atoms in, of each element on both sides of a chemical equation must match. The equation is this said to be balanced. So what we're saying here is we've got to have the same number of atoms of each species on both sides for it to be a balanced equation. We must have the same number of atoms on both sides for a reaction to be considered balanced and obeying the law of conservation of mass. So to balance the reaction, First, we balance the atoms for the elements that occur in only one substance on each side of the reaction. In this problem, oxygen is involved with two substances on the product side, carbon dioxide and water. So I will wait and balance that later. I'll concentrate on the other species. Ca carbon and hydrogen are only in one species on both sides. So I'll balance them first. You can see that carbon, I have one carbon on both sides so I don't need to change anything there so that's balanced but on hydrogen you can see that I have four on one side and two on the other so to balance that I could easily just put a two coefficient in front of water and that would give me my four hydrogens on both sides so I do that now when I do that now I can see that I've now changed the oxygens now we have changed the coefficient of one of the oxygens on the product side, it's going to be easier to balance the oxygens. We can determine that we now need two coefficients on the O2 side to balance the oxygen on both sides to four. You can see I got one carbon on both sides. I have four hydrogens on both sides. I now have four oxygens on this side and only two oxygens on this on the reactant side. So to balance this, all I need to do is put a 2 coefficient in front of the O2, and then I would have that ba as balanced as well. So my balance equation is CH4 plus 2O2s gives me CO2 plus 2H2Os. Notice I have one carbon on both sides. I have four hydrogens on both sides. I have four oxygens on both sides. Caution, for formulas that have subscripts, you must account for all atoms, especially when dealing with parentheses for polyatomic species. For example, 
iron 3 sulfate. Okay, this has two irons, and then you have SO4, but you have three of them. Okay, you have three SO4s. That means I have three sulfurs, and I have three times four, 12 oxygens to account for. You have to account for all the atoms and the subscripts within the species. Caution, remember that you can't change the subscript in the formula to balance equations. You may only change the coefficients. I can't go in there and change that 3 on that SO4. Okay, if I do that, I change the compound. Okay, I only can balance the coefficient in front of that iron 3 sulfate. If you change the subscripts, you are changing the substance. Let's try balancing some equations. At O2, PCL3 goes to PLCL3. Okay. I can see that I have one phosphorus on both sides, so that's not a problem. I also see I got three chlorines on both sides. So the major problem here is the oxygen. So how can I balance this to fix this? Well, I have two oxygens on one side, one on the other. So it seems that if I were just to put a two in front of that PLO, POCl3, I would fix the oxygens. However, notice now I've changed my phosphorus and my chlorines. So now I got two phosphorus and six chlorines. So how can I fix that? Well, if I put a two in front of the PCL3, I now have two phosphorus, six chlorines, and two oxygens on both sides. Let's look at this one. P4, N2O, P4, O6, N2. Notice I have P4 on both sides. And I have N2 on both sides. So once again, I got an oxygen problem. So I see I got six on one side and one on the other. So the first step would be to put a six in front of my N2O to fix my oxygens. Notice now I messed up my nitrogens. So I have six, of, uh, 12 of those, six times two. So that means I have to put a six on the other side, which now I have 12 nitrogens on that side. And we didn't mess up the phosphorus, so that stayed the same, four and four. And this is my balance equation. Let's look at this one. I've got, got two arsenics on both sides, not a problem. i got one sulfur on one side and three on the other. So it looks like I would have to put a three in front of the SO2 to balance that. So now that's left as my oxygen. You see i got six oxygens from my SO2s, and I have three more oxygens. So i got a total of nine oxygens on my product side, and I only have two oxygens on my reactant side. Well, if I'm dealing with O2 as an even number, it's going to be difficult to do this easily because um, it's going to be any number I put there, I'm going to have an even number. So how am I going to get odd numbers? So here's a little trick. Technique to handle odd numbers. Determine the number needed and divide by the scrub subscript of the species. Next, you multiply the entire equation by the subscript to obtain the whole number. So what we're saying here is, okay, I know I need a total of nine oxygens. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that O2 by nine. Okay, but notice that's really 18 oxygens. Okay, so that's not helping me. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this subscript and do it as a fraction and say nine halves. So now if I got 9 times 2, that's 18, divided by 2, that's 9. It's going to be balanced. Now, not correct in the way that we want to do things, because we want whole numbers, but it would get me to my point. And then what we do is say, okay, multiply by that fraction, that 2, to get rid of that, uh, that half term. So then I'll multiply everything by 2. So that cancels, and then that turns to 6. So I'll multiply the oxygen, the O2, by 9 halves. Then I'll multiply everything by 2. And I get my final answer. Let's look at this one. We see that barium is balanced on both sides. I see that sodium is balanced on both sides. I see that my nitrates, I got NO3 on two of them on one side and one on the other. Since nitrate is the same species, I can just look at that and balance that and say, okay, 
let's go ahead and put a 2 in front of the sodium nitrate. Well, then that messes up my sodiums. So then I'll put a 2 in front of my sodium. Now I balance my chlorides. Now let's have 2 in my barium. So there's my balance equation. Homework 19.